Many of the great players in the past used to excel in the mid-range, but over the years the mid-range jumper has gone out of style, replaced by the more valuable three-point shot. And the analytics revolution and Mori Ball have helped turn those long twos into threes, but does that mean the mid-range is now dead? And are mid-range jumpers really bad? First, let's understand why Mori Ball works. Named after Houston Rockets general manager Daryl Morey, Morey Ball prioritizes shots that provide the biggest bang for the buck. Layups, free throws, and open threes. The average NBA possession last year yielded 1.1 points, but the average open three was converted at 38.5%. And at three points per make, these shots are worth about 1.15 points per attempt. Open threes are good. Layups are even better. Players made 63% of their shots at the rim in 2019, which yields about a point and a quarter per attempt on average. And free throws are hyper efficient. The average NBA player shoots 77% from the line, so a two shot foul is typically worth about 1.5 points. The idea behind Mori Ball is that a steady diet of these attempts produces efficient offense, and in a vacuum, that's true. Adopting these strategies is part of the reason why league-wide scoring efficiency has jumped to record levels in the last few seasons. But NBA shots aren't attempted in a vacuum. Defenses could choose to create a five-man wall around the hoop and quite literally never surrender an open layup or free throw. But of course, that would give opponents as many wide open threes as they would like, an even bigger win for offenses. Instead, defenses try to minimize the openness of those other options while taking away open layups and dunks as a first principle at the same time. So how has Mori Ball changed the mid-range? Well, defenses love long twos. They are generally the least efficient shots in basketball. A strong shooter can make a 23-foot two-pointer around 40% of the time. That's almost identical in distance to a three-point shot, but the three-point shot is worth 50% more. Towing the line in basketball is like trading $1.20 for 80 cents. With minimal effort, shooters can grab a better exchange rate on their long shots by making it a three. This same principle holds true as we inch closer to the hoop. A 22-foot shot might be worth 70 cents on the dollar, but again, we can get the full exchange rate by stepping back behind the three-point line with only a small amount of effort. Things get more interesting at maybe 18 feet away. Percentages there are higher, let's say 45% for good shooters, but most players can't easily step behind the line from 18 feet away, so they're stuck with a shot that yields a meager 0.9 points. The offense's solution, naturally, is to get closer to the hoop, where the value of a two-pointer produces greater returns. This realization has led to defensive adjustments, for instance, a rise in drop coverage, a pick-and-roll defense where teams can avoid giving up a wide-open three, but then deprioritize long twos as this big man defender focuses on containing a dribble drive or a paint catch from the rolling big man. It's a win for the defense to induce most ball handlers to take a pull-up 18-footer. And this is precisely where the mid-range jumper still has value. With defenses keyed in on no layups and no threes, there's a soft spot in between. Coaches want opposing offenses to take these shots because they're often inefficient. But what if we run the same numbers against a good mid-range shooter? According to Synergy, the average half-court play, excluding second-chance points, produces just under one point per possession this year, with the worst of those offenses clocking in at .92 points per play. Maury's Rockets, who took the fewest long twos in the league, finished second at 1.04 points per play. If we use these half-court efficiencies as a baseline, even a decent 45% on long twos, worth about .9 points per shot, looks like a win for the defense every time. So, we might expect a team like the Spurs, who took the most long twos in the league by far this year, to struggle on offense. But San Antonio actually finished with the third best half-court offense in 2019, right behind the Rockets. And the Spurs weren't even super accurate on their long twos, shooting them a bit under our 45% baseline. So, what in the name of Dirk Nowitzki is going on here? Well, these percentages aren't actually produced in a vacuum. 
So if left unchecked, a good mid-range shooter will shoot over 45%. He might even shoot over 50%. And that can lead to high quality offense. And so in turn, defenses allocate resources to slow down these mid-range threats. And those resources come at the expense of guarding the hoop or the three-point line. This defensive attention is what lowers the field goal percentage on mid-range shots, but it also opens up drives or more three-point shooting, as was the case with the Spurs this year. And this isn't just about help defenders. A player's own defender has to hug him closer or respect an upfake if an open mid-range shot is a viable threat. That drop coverage and pick and roll isn't nearly as effective if the ball handler can easily walk into 50% foul line jumpers, especially against otherwise stingy defenses, much like Kawhi Leonard did this year against the 76ers. In the first four games of their playoff series, Leonard made 65% of his mid-range shots against a soft drop coverage before Philly was forced to adjust. In the book Thinking Basketball, I explore why the best shooter shouldn't always shoot, Similarly, the best shot in a vacuum isn't always the best shot for a team based on the opposing defensive coverage. Exploiting a soft spot in the mid-range can open up better opportunities, but only with skilled mid-range shooters. The game's best mid-range shooter this year, Kevin Durant, took 367 shots from around that foul line and elbow extended area, and he made 55% of them, good for 1.1 points per attempt, almost as valuable as the average open three-pointer. A wide open mid-range jumper is never going to reach the heights of an offense built around video game three-point shooting or unstoppable forces at the rim. So while layups, free throws, and open threes remain the game's best shots, there's not only direct value from making mid-rangers, but perhaps even more importantly, there's meta value in pulling defenders away from the rim or the three-point line and adding a third level for defenses to worry about. As for the Spurs, they added DeMar DeRozan, who took mid-range shots more frequently than anyone else in the league, and yet the returning Spurs regulars all saw their three-point shooting spike, improving corner three-point percentage by six percentage points and above the break threes by three points. Whether some of that is hot shooting is slightly irrelevant. The point is that a mid-range centric offense excelled in 2019 by providing a third level of attack that helps set up open shots or drives and free throws. There's no magic number of mid-rangers to take or three pointers for that matter, but the main takeaways are this. First, long twos will always have a terrible return on investment because of their proximity to the three point shot. They should really only be taken in desperation. Second, mid-range shots have inherent value when made at high percentages, especially when they're self-generated at will as the shot clock winds down, where 45 percenters can raise the floor of a broken possession. And finally, mid-range shots are perhaps most impactful because of their metagame value. The threat of a viable mid-range score can draw fouls and make it easier to score at the hoop or on the perimeter. So remember, Mori Ball works but that doesn't mean the mid-range is dead. If you're interested in more of these kinds of ideas, Thinking Basketball, the book, analyzes shot distribution, paradoxes, and how this plays into team offense. Buying the book supports the channel, as does subscribing at patreon.com slash thinkingbasketball, where you can access member-only articles and a database of proprietary stats going back to 1955. Thanks so much for watching all the way to the end, and I hope you're having a great day.